Well, I'm Jameis, Jameis Melwood Johnson. I am uh, 51 years old. Uh, I have poor vision. I'm l actually legally blind. Uh, my eye disease is uh, called Stargardt's disease, and it's in the family of macular degenerative uh, eye disease. <laughs> I was born in Casa Grande, Arizona in 1952. It's the Valentine State, uh, and I was born with a, a girl, my twin sister Becky. I uh, went through school, met my wife, Danelle. Uh, we moved to New York City, uh, where I attended Columbia Law School. We returned to Salt Lake City. A place I was never, uh, I never thought that I would live uh, in permanently. Uh, most macular degeneration uh, that you hear about occurs in old people. It's age-related. Stargardt's disease is juvenile onset, and uh, I discovered uh, that I had this eye disease when I was about 18. Uh, uh, I did not drive after my mission at all, and, um, and uh, my eyes have uh, fairly steadily declined after that. Um, I went through law school with poor vision. Uh, I've never really been able to see what's on the board. When we moved to uh, New York, it was really uh, a wonderful situation because the mass transit is uh, so pervasive and everybody uses it. Living in Salt Lake, uh, it really is uh, a land where people in the wide open spaces drive their own vehicles. And um, I've really not had uh, a lot of trouble getting around. I, I can always uh, ride the bus or take the mass transit. Um, but uh, currently, uh, I've, I ride my bike. I get up early, um, sometimes as early as 4.30, uh, sometimes as late as, uh, it's usually no later than 6, but it's an average of around 5, 5.15. And uh, I don my bicycle riding garb, and it's more elaborate in the winter than it is in the summer, but in the winter, I put on a uh, heavy uh, blue coat that my son Clark uh, got when he drove an ambulance. It's got a nice big reflected stripe on it. I take uh, my telephone. Um, on the way in, I like to listen to my messages. So I take an ear uh, piece, hook it to my ear, plug it to my cell phone. I usually take a, um, a cell phone holster, hang it around my neck so that the phone is dangling in front of me. Occasionally I put on ski pants if it's raining or snowing and uh, over my pants. I put on a bike helmet, sometimes I'll put on a headband to keep my ears warm and hold my earpiece on. Uh, then the helmet goes, goes on after that. You know, um, I've really given some thought to the design of my bicycle and uh, what uh, it needs to be an urban biker and a blind urban biker at that. First of all, I have a bike where I sit bolt upright and uh, my daughter-in-law said I look like Mr. Bean riding it around, but nonetheless, it's got high handlebars. It's got a seat that's very, very cushy. It's one of the big fat seats. It's not one of those small little saddle seats. It's for an old guy with, with a uh, with the rear end that's looking for comfort, you know? In addition, uh, you have to have a light. When you're riding in as early as I do, it's black and dark. So I bought a halogen light, and it's very powerful, and it's got a battery, it's about as big as a milk bottle, and uh, I hooked it up to my, uh, my bicycle. In addition, I put a kickstand on, on my bike, and last time I checked, kickstands were about as uncool as a rearview mirror on your bike. On the way back, I'm going very slow, but I'm able to use that phone hanging around my neck to have conversations. No, I haven't. I haven't talked with him. I haven't tried all day to call him. I should probably try and call him on the way home. For the 45 minutes that it takes for me to go uphill, I'm on the phone talking to people. Me too. Well, I'm just leaving it downtown. Well, okay, I'll try and call Dave. I'll probably give him a call right now. Yeah, it's should. not uncommon for someone to say, what are you doing? because I'm huffing and puffing, and I say, well, I'm riding my bike home, going uphill. And it takes me about 45 minutes to get up that hill back into my house. It's kind of a long day. I'll get in at six and stay till six. I also have to be um, 
very cautious on this bike because I could be careening along and, uh, you know, find myself in kind of a dangerous situation. Well, we just stay out of his way. You, know, you <laughs> see him coming and you just, you know, kind of dive out of his way. You know, you never know what he's going to hit. Uh, he could be mistaken, uh, you know, stoplights for, uh, you know, who knows what. Uh, he, James is also, uh, besides being ridiculously brilliant, he's kind of spacey too, so. I actually, he has inspired me to uh, now walk to work. Because I figure if a blind man can ride a bike to work, I can certainly walk to work. Oh, you know, I, I love James. He's my, my favorite guy in the whole world. Take it to the you, okay? Okay. Right. He thinks he's got his big brain. Are we ready for Rudolph? Often I give uh, guitar lessons Sunday evening to whoever wants them, and it's usually a group of kids. You know, I guess, you know, in theory, people who know him uh, think he has a disability, you know, because he can't see. But, you know, once you get to know him, it's like it's not even an issue. You know, it doesn't even, it doesn't even a, Effect, you know, he just he just plows through straight ahead, doesn't feel sorry for himself. You know, I think that the uh, the eyesight is, is 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 a problem, but it's actually something to sort of be overcome. And I am kind of curious to see if someone who uh, has an eye uh, eye problem can consistently ride the bike in. You know, and the whole idea of using uh, middle-aged muscle power, excuse me, middle-aged muscle power in, in what is not an extremely bike-friendly city um, to get into work uh, intrigues me and I hope it might be an example for, uh, for others who might think, you know, we can do this. Uh, and I think that the eyesight um, issue is just one more thing uh, to be overcome.